Lord, I am appearing for respondent number two. For respondent to filing of call. Respondent number two. Who is respondent number two? He is the private complainant. Ah, yes, sir. Then I am appearing for him. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. So the argument is that this can't be extortion. So let's mm. see what is the allegation. Mm. Allegation is that uh, these people who control the ED and the ED. Uh, conducted raids, etc., or started investigations against certain companies. Yes. Thereafter, when those companies paid electoral bonds to the ruling party, which was controlling the ED and uh, those governments. Yes. Thereafter, uh, the uh, harassment by the ED stopped. And in this way, they were extorted of money through these electoral bonds. Now, my learned friend said that this can't be extortion. Just see the definition. Your Lordship is aware of the definition of extortion. Yes, sir. Whoever intentionally puts any person in fear of any injury to that person or to any other and thereby dishonestly induces the person so put in fear to deliver to any person any property or valuable security or anything signed or sealed which may be converted into valuable security commits extortion. Now, if they put the fear in the minds of the companies that the ED will arrest them or the ED will raid them, etc. And thereafter, my Lord, they are forced to pay to buy electoral bonds to give them to the party which controls the enforcement directorate. And thereafter, the enforcement directorate stops the action against those companies. This is a classic case of extortion. What else is extortion? Therefore, how can anybody say that this is not extortion? And what has been done? Only an FIR has been directed to be registered. In fact, even the Supreme Court, when it gave the judgment in the electoral bonds case, had said <coughs> elaborately that they fear that these bonds may be used for bribery. For, uh, uh, for quid pro quo, etc. And this is what appears to have happened. It is not merely quid pro quo, it is actually extortion by putting the fear of arrest, putting the fear of raids, etc. in the minds of those people running those companies and thereby inducing them to buy electoral bonds. And after electoral bonds are bought and given to the ruling party, thereafter everything is stopped. This is absolutely the classic case of extortion. And only an FIR has been ordered to be registered. Investigation will follow now. When we went to the Supreme Court asking for a court-monitored SIT into these offenses, court said, yes, offenses may have been committed. But for that, there is no need for an SIT. Let the law follow its normal course. That means let the normal criminal uh, procedure be applied. And that's what exactly has been done by the complainant. He, he made this complaint to the um, magistrate that this investigation needs to be done. He, he first filed the complaint. Thereafter, when nothing was done, he went to the magistrate. The magistrate has only ordered an FIR and an investigation. And, and these are the people who are, among others, who will need to be investigated in this extortion. So therefore, my Lord, it's a, it's a perfectly valid case. And, and at this stage, my Lord, at this stage, no, uh, uh, no plea can be raised that, uh, the, that sanction has to be taken at this stage because sanction will be taken at the stage of taking cognizance. No that cognizance. Is not, that is not taken. the plea also. Yes, that's not the that plea. That is not the plea presently. Yes, yes. Today the plea is only that this is not a case of extortion. And I am saying that this is the most classic case of extortion. If ever there is a case of extortion, this is it. When you put the fear of arrest and put the fear of uh, raids, etc. in the minds of a company and thereby induce them uh, with that fear to give electoral bonds to the party which controls the ED and thereafter the ED stops the action what else is extortion? This, this is classic extortion. And I submit, my Lord, that there is, if your Lordship wants to issue notice and hear this case, that is all right. We don't mind that. But there is no case whatsoever of any interim order to stop any investigation at this stage. 
no coercive action is being taken against these people right now only an order for investigation has been made that an investigation should take place why should the investigation not go on in such a classic case of extortion this is my respectful submission lord yes state you are right to commence investigation because refer huh? to you are right to commence investigation to commence. Yes, yesterday it was referred so therefore you will not be able to say anything prior to the investigation yes will answer the petitioner is before this court calling in question registration of a crime in crime number 224 of 2024 after it have uh, the uh, sorry sorry uh, registration so and so for it having been registered on a reference being made by the learned magistrate in pcr 4880 of 2024 under section 1563 of the crpc the second respondent claims to be the co president of janadhikara sangarsha parishad jsp and is um, and is the de facto complainant in the case at hand it yes. is the case of the complainant that he uh the case of the complainant before the concerned court that the accused in the case at hand accused number 4 along with other accused have indulged in extortion extortion to mean an offence under section 384 of the ipc and section and uh, the allegation stretches to section 120b Read with thirty-four of the IPC. Three eighty-three, my lord. Extortion is three eighty-three. No. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. That is. I'm, I'm sorry. Three eighty-four is punishment for extortion. Yes. So and so, the learned senior counsel K. G. Raghavan, taking this court through the documents appended to the petition, would prima facie demonstrate that there is no case of extortion made out in the complaint or in the reference made by the. learned magistrate seeking to ref, uh, seeking to uh, investigate into the matter okay. the learned senior counsel would submit that the complaint itself is so vague that it is uh, it complaint itself is vague and does not make out any ingredient of extortion qua the complainant yeah. per contra the learned senior counsel prashant bhushan prashant bhushan right yes ah, yes prashant yes. bhushan representing the second respondent complainant would vehemently refute the submission to contend that this is a classic case of extortion where the accused number 2 accused number who is accused number 2 ed ed accused number 2 the enforcement directorate have uh, put fear in certain companies to Uh, execute electoral or to uh, take electoral bonds as a quid pro quo as a quid pro quo and uh, the apex court while dealing with the issue has left it open to the aggrieved to uh, to take recourse to remedies available under the law governing both criminal procedures i e ordinary law governing criminal procedure it is the submission that um in the, taking cue from the order passed by the apex court the complaint is registered before the learned magistrate and therefore the crime should be permitted to be investigated into i have given my anxious consideration to the submissions made by the respective learned counsel at this juncture the issue is whether the investigation should be interdicted or interjected on the score that the offences would meet or other uh, the ingredients would meet the offences or otherwise sec what is alleged is section 384 of the ipc section 384 reads as follows it deals with punishment for extortion the ingredients of extortion are found in section 383 section 383 reads as follows section 383 mandates that any informant who approaches the concerned court or the jurisdictional police should be should have been put into fear 
and due to that fear he should have delivered some property to the accused it is only then extortion can be established prima facie against that accused qua the victim the it is settled next para it is settled principle of law that criminal law can be set into motion by any person but there are provisions under the ipc that they should or they they can be set into motion only by the aggrieved to illustrate offenses of assault offenses of the uh, uh, thieving under section 379 or extortion under section 383 it is only if the accused has put the victim under fear a victim would mean the first informant under fear to deliver a property it is then it would amount to extortion if the ingredients of the case at hand is noticed who is the complainant becomes significant the complainant is a the co president of a janadhikara sangarsha parishad it is not his case that he has been put into fear to deliver any property to the hands of the uh, to his hands it is not his case that he has been threatened of any uh, parting with any property uh, therefore the complainant in the case at hand if he wants to project section 384 of the ipc should be an aggrieved informant under section 383 which he is not lord i just wanted to point out i don't want to interrupt your lordship yes sir this uh, ar antulay's judgment which is a constitution ben judgment yes sir state. anybody can set the criminal law into motion yes para 6 yes. and it says that unless there is a specific bar Yes, sir. the criminal procedure code only yes, in sir. those cases the mm. claimant has to be an aggrieved person. Okay. Otherwise, so if some somebody else is, has been extorted for uh, delivering property, how can somebody else register the crime? Even a simple, yes. Lord, because yes. because two two reasons. Firstly, uh, in any crime, Lord, generally all society it's a crime against society and therefore anybody in society is is interested. 384 is not a crime against society exactly. sir. it's crime against an individual so lord any crime whether it is murder also murder is also a crime against a particular person that But is it's true a crime against society and therefore you don't want such criminals to be roaming free and that that is all right sir i'll i'll pass the order i'll consider that submission reason. also sir second reason is my lord Yes. that in a case of extortion of this kind yes. obviously the complainant will not come uh, the, the the person again who has been extorted will no. not come forward because he has got the relief of being no uh, that's scared. that's a different thing that doesn't mean somebody else can shoot from somebody else's shoulder so no lord this is precisely this this is precisely the reason why the supreme court said that unless there is a specific bar under any provision of the crpc that uh, that only the complainant can make the complaint anybody can make the complaint and i submit my lord in extortion there is no such specific bar no such specific bar and this is also for the reason that the in this case my lord the victim will not come forward because the victim is also the beneficiary he, can he has been extorted but he has also benefited from inaction on the part of the ed therefore he is not going to come forward only all right sir i'll i'll answer it i'll answer, uh, note your submissions also sir Complete answer to my learned friend submission my lord is section 39 of the crpc one minute yes the ayanand uh, alli sir the submission we went to sir submission uh, sir prashant bhushan sir you uh, quote there ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಮುಂಚೆ ರಾಘವನ್ ಸರ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ದಿ ಲರ್ನೆಡ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಕೆ ಜಿ ರಾಘವನ್ ವುಡ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ವೋಕ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕೆನ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರಿಮಿನಲ್ ಲಾ ಇನ್ ಟು ಮೋಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ್ ಭೂಷಣ್ ಸರ್ ಹತ್ರ ದಿ ಲರ್ನೆಡ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ್ ಭೂಷಣ್ ವುಡ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರಿಮಿನಲ್ ಲಾ can be set into uh, uh, can be set into motion by any person is the law laid down by the apex court in the case of ar abdul rahman antule versus rs naik so and so in 1984 in 1984 less there is a specific bar yes, 1986 to scc 716 ah, 1986 to scc reported in 1986 to scc 716 no, no, but it's actually no 
it is the 84 sir that is different locus held in the 84 only 1984 to sc yes. that is that is a different para judgment six. para six yeah, that is 198 locus is said only 1984 जजमेंट ऑफ़ 1986 so and so answers the issue of locus que the offense under extortion, extortion. the now come to the end should be should be a person who is put into fear to deliver any property or valuable security to the accused the issue need not the issue uh, the issue in the case at hand is not that the complainant has suffered any fear at the hands of the petitioner accused number 4 or the accused as the case would be it is the case that they are a uh, what organization you are sir j it's called the jan adhikar jan adhikar sangha parishad sangha parishad that's a registered trust uh, so and so the uh, respondents are and they are entitled to register the crime for extortion uh, uh, in the light of uh, the finding of the apex court in so and so the learn uh, the i so and so also because we're not the complainant the the, uh, the victim will not come forward in this kind of a case ah that's all right yes so and so a perus the learn the learned magistrate while referring the matter to investigation has observed as follows page 33 to 35 nowhere the learned magistrate observes that it is the victim who has suffered at the hands of the petitioner the accused for parting away with property on a fear that is injected into him unless that is the ingredient of uh, uh, unless the complaint meets the ingredient of section 383 as observed here in above permitting investigation even prima facie till the statement of objections are filed by the respondents would become an abuse of the process of the law in that light i deem it appropriate to interdict further investigation into the matter till the objections are filed by the uh, till the next date of hearing 